If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. Second, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. Okay, here we go. 3, 2, 1. UFC 248 came. We all saw and the main card disappointed. Plain and simple. Fucking hated it. I don't understand what happened. Uh, the fight card was good. A lot of the fights were very, very entertaining. Neil Magny won. Sugar Shane came back after two years and he won. Uh, and then two main bouts. So let's go first to the main card. Yoel Romero versus Israel Adesanya. The disappointment that was the main event of the evening. Uh, I can't fault uh, Style Bender for the performance that he did or the, the, he fought the way he fought. It was smart. Uh, I'm not gonna, as, as, as an analyst point of view, that was a very smart fight. He did the bare minimum to win. And the, the thing about title defenses and, and if, you are, if you are the challenger, your job is to be convincing. Your job is to take everything away from the champion. You are the one who is challenging for the title. You want the fans, the judges, and your peers to be convinced that you deserve that belt. So it's your job to be more offensive, your job to be uh, more aggressive. It's your job to take everything away from the current title holder. That was Yoel Romero's job. He didn't do anything. He didn't, he, I mean, okay, he didn't do anything. He did something. He did certain things, but it wasn't enough to win the fight. Uh... I have to agree with Adesanya. Romero fights in spurts. He's a very explosive fighter. He's a very athletic individual. He is very... um, He's a freak of nature. So he will always fight in spurts. He's he's one of those guys who doesn't have a steady pace. He will... There's a lull and then he will sprint. And then he will rest. He will recover and then he will sprint again. This style of fighting is very entertaining. Because it keeps fans on their feet because you don't know what's going to happen next. And uh, Romero is such a freak of an athlete that he will use all of his athletic ability in order to win fights. He fights at a very high pace when, when he starts sprinting, so to speak. When he starts sprinting on you, everything is explosive. Everything is fast. Everything is quick. And... For someone like that, it, it, it makes for... I mean, on paper, this fight was, was supposed to be f- fucking exciting. It, it didn't happen. I, I don't understand why. So, uh, for Yoel Romero's part, he was supposed to take everything away from Adesanya. If you are fighting for the belt, if you're... It's a, it's, it's a title match. You have to do everything in your power. You have to... You, you have to drain the gas tank in order to win. He did not do that. I I do not understand what was going through his head. He was probably worried about uh, Adesanya striking, uh, his timing. A lot of the things that he was supposed to do wasn't there. Um, I don't know. He was probably looking for that knockout punch or that knockout knee or or that barrage of punches that never happened. I mean, I mean, the guy is a fucking wrestler. The guy is a high-level elite wrestler. I do not understand why Yoel Romero did not wrestle Israel Adesanya. Um, it's 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 simple. It's super. It's super simple. Di ko maintindihan bakit you are an elite wrestler. See, Israel Adesanya knows little wrestling. You've been wrestling your entire life. Why didn't you go for a shot? Why didn't you go for a clinch? Why didn't you pin him against the cage? Why didn't you take him down? 
he could have easily taken him down at will and used his ground and pound. I do not understand why Yoel Romero did not do that. He just decided to, you know, fuck around the cage. Throw throw a few bombs that, that never knocked out uh, Adesanya and then started complaining when, you know, he's, he's a nice guy. You can, I mean, it's, it's hard to, to shit on him too much because he's such a nice guy. But for him to say that people paid to see a fight, yes, that is true. But you didn't come there to fight. You were waiting for him to attack so that you can do a counterattack. I, I, he, he didn't initiate that much. Uh, so clearly, he wasn't, he wasn't really into it. Or he was also afraid of what uh, Stylebender was going to do to him. Now let's flip over to the champion's uh, corner. Uh, like what I previously said in this podcast, Israel Adesanya did the bare minimum. And when I say the bare minimum, it was such the minimum. He just defended. I mean, you have to understand, when you, when you say this is a title defense, your job is to defend the title. So that's exactly what he did. He just defended. You know, he defended. He, he, he moved around the cage, threw a lot of leg kicks. Those leg kicks fucked up um, Yoel Romero's leg. He was limping in the fourth and fifth round. He couldn't mount any kind of attack because, uh, you know, legs don't lie. He, he fucked up his leg, plain and simple. Now, uh, Adesanya's part, he did, he just defended the belt and outpointed, okay? That is the most appropriate term to use for this fight. He outpointed uh, Yoel Romero. Romero probably landed uh, high impact shots. Uh, the shots that mattered but you know those were just like a few in the probably one or two on each round the more but you know these were in the scorecards that's counted as like one or two two points so he didn't really do much and Adesanya peppered uh, peppered Romero with leg kick so he did the bare minimum he did enough to win the fight but not enough and as a fight fan if i'm going to be if i'm going to change my hat right now into a fight fan that was a very disappointing fight for both fighters um, if you're an Izzy fan if you're a, a Romero fan you wanted this to be an electrifying bout so with on that regard they both disappointed uh yeah yeah they, on that regard they both disappointed the fans they disappointed their peers they disappointed a lot of of people that that expected fireworks now what saved that card was the co-main event missing any is the co-main event should have been the main event Zhang Wei Li versus Yuana Yon Jacek for the UFC strawweight title so Zhang Wei Li won via split decision I agreed it was such a close fight I mean if they said it was a draw I would have accepted it I gave uh, uh, Zhang Wei Li three rounds to two. And, you know, Joanna Jun Jacek, you cannot question her heart. You cannot question her guts, her will to win. That swollen forehead, oh my God. He, she kept fighting all throughout with that swollen head. Uh, I, I really hope that she's okay. She should have... Um, done a lot of medical procedures to get that swelling down but the fight oh my god I, I can't even Joe Rogan Joe Rogan John Anik and DC kept saying oh my god what a fight and uh, I have to agree if this is definitely a candidate for fight of the year even fight fight of the decade this will go down as one of the best fights in the UFC Hall of Fame it was straight up striking it was straight up striking you it was a display of skill it was a display of heart. It was a display of technical proficiency. It was a display of pure martial arts at work. They didn't really have to, they, they, they didn't really hype up the fight. They didn't trash talk with each other during the media tour. Everything happened inside the cage. Striking was amazing. Joanna displayed high level Muay Thai. Zhang Wei Li expressed high-level kickboxing her timing was really good she had tremendous power in both hands 
Kasi ito mo, sobrang magay yung mukha ni Ioana. You cannot get that amount of swelling by throwing, you know, mediocre punches. Those were power punches. And it it was such a chess uh, chess match of, of, of a striking game. And then when everything, uh, it, when either fighter started rocking each other, they would go for the clinch. Um, Yuana wasn't able to take down Zhang. Zhang was able to momentarily take Yuana down. Yuana was able to stand up. It, it was such a beautiful fight to watch. I'd watch that fight over and over again. I hope they get a. Uh, I hope Yuana gets a rematch, and um, she deserves it. I mean, those fighters. I mean, if if you if you if you saw the audience. I mean, when the when. When the fifth, uh, when when the fight was over, everyone was standing. They were clapping. They were cheering. They didn't really care who won. Uh, for me, I was very critical. I was like, okay, now it was so hard to 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 give that decision. But yeah, split decision to Zhang Wei Li. Now this is this is a very good um, gauge for the amount of talent that that. China has in terms of MMA it's not just for China for for Asians in general so if Zhang Wei Li can do it why not other Asian countries I mean you have the Korean zombie you have fighters from Japan now it, it gives you hope it gives you it gives you like this preview of the potential of, of MMA for Asia and the ability of Asians to compete at a high level such as the UFC it was again. Walang masabi. It was such a beautiful fight. You uh, you can't complain. And, and daming ng yara. The striking was super nice. Uh, Yoana Yon Jacek's combinations were on point. Uh, she was able to attack low and then go high. So that opened up Zhang. Zhang countered by by going to the body and from going to the body from the body went up to the head. When Yoana did the exact same thing, Zhang would just wait for the jab. Finish with a straight counter with a hook, and that's where you know that left the, the what do you call this? That right hook kept hitting the button, that caused that swelling, and then you wanna being such a high IQ kickboxer and a Muay Thai, an elite Muay Thai fighter would always utilize her legs. I just wish that she just I mean in the rematch, she hopefully gets to chop down Zhang Wei Li. She's taller, so if you're taller, you should be able to utilize a lot of leg kicks. Uh, for this one, she did a lot of front kicks and a lot of head kicks. So, I really hope the, the UFC makes a rematch of this fight and it's going to be exciting. So, that being said, happy International Women's Day and March is Women's Month. What a way to cap off the evening. The, the, the men did not deliver. The women saved that card. The women saved that card. So... Thank you to Knots and Crosses. Find them on Facebook and Instagram. The best gear in MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. Thank you to Awan Coffee. I always buy my coffee with them. Locally sourced, locally produced. I support local. Any company, any brand that, that, that supports local farmers, I will buy their stuff. And then Bottle Boy PH. If, can't, if you can't go to the party, the party will go to you. Everything here is on Facebook and on Instagram. Go look them up on social media. Order your stuff from them. Okay, let's all support each other. I love you guys. And that's what Coach Frank says. Bye-bye.